The final quarter of the season begins here at Richmond International Raceway for the first of the two races. Jeffrey Fingai got the pull in the 20 car, the 93 of Annie Thomas on his outside. Annie Thomas uh, swung it way out wide in turn number one and they're side by side still down the back straight away into turn number three. Thomas trying to continue with a bit of a run off the corner but it will be Fingai going to the point after lap number one. Sean Morrison very close behind in that number 06 car. Three wide, a bit further back here is Mike Jones trying to pick up a couple of positions, which he might be able to do in that 72 car. Uh, he might go to the points lead if he can have a good run this race. He just squeezed between Sanchez and Bondarenko. Now Andrew Rick trying to do the same as the 99 and the 23 rub. Uh, the 99 pushes Rick all the way up as far as he possibly can. In fact, oh, there, around goes Matt Duncan. For some reason, I think something broke on that car. No yellow for that. We'll have to check that out. Sure enough, the 99 would come down into turn number one and just blow a tire or something and uh, slide up the track, save it from getting into the wall, but in the process, stall the car, and uh, he's going to go a few laps down. No caution for this. Uh, surprisingly enough, he was able to get that thing refired and brought it into the pits. On board Terrence Day as he tries to make something work on the outside here. London. Drops underneath Stringer and barely gets his nose in before the corner. Uh, he will get that position from the 87. As it appears, Sam Curtis in the 19 is on the low side of the 55 right now. 55 moving back in a hurry. It appears, oh, Stringer goes around and that's going to bring out a caution. Coming out at turn number two, the 19 would just get all over the back of the 87 and that would turn him around. The 33 would go around uh, at the exit of two and the 23 of Andrew Rick would swerve all over the place, but get absolutely nowhere with it as he plows into the 87. That will take him and Julian Sanchez uh, out of the race for sure. Uh, Matthew Stringer and Zachariel both have some, some significant damage, but neither is diving down to pit road immediately, so perhaps they'll be able to stay in. A couple of notable close calls for a pair of drivers. Mike Doan got the slightest bit of contact from Stringer, but made it through keeping his, his foot in it as did Zachary Fitzwater for once in his damn life. The drivers trying to sort themselves out here as Young gets into Thomas Walker sent up the track, Jose Bautista and London also into, into the wall on a separate trip. And uh, those three will now have damage, although it's mostly just cosmetic and uh, aerodynamics don't really matter here anyway since it's a short track, I suppose. So they should be okay. At the extreme tail end of the field, Luko Vrovac just plowed into the rear of the number 24. Again, no big deal for Gadu in the 24, but Obrovac will probably need to come into the pits to remove that hood. I doubt he can see much out of the front of that car, and that's a bit of an impairment. After a bit of an embarrassing caution period, we're back to green flag racing here. Jeffrey Fingai leads him back, but Sean Morrison and Sam Murrow, they get three wide for the lead into turn one. An aggressive move by, by the 38 might give him the lead as the 06 makes some contact with his quarter panel. They, they race very tight into turn number three. John Morrison squeezing him, uh, squeezing Morrow all the way down to the yellow line, and it will be Morrow who gets the lead. A very impressive pass by that rookie. He won at Fontana. He wants his second win uh, here today, if at all possible. Prudence Littlejohn having a notable run so far in the 31 car. Uh, up to third for her. Uh, took a look on Sean Morrison, was not able to get the pass done. The 06 slipped back, uh, back in front of that driver. What? Luke Walker crashed under caution has a destroyed rear end, but so far he is doing quite well. He's up into the fourth position since uh, since the drop of uh, the restart. Parents Day, Young and Curtis racing three wide down into turn number three. Terrence Day shuts, slams the door on the 22. Uh, good job on Young to take evasive action to prevent a collision there. He's gonna go after the 55 now. Patience might pay off for that number 22 car. The 06 going after the 38 for the lead. Morrison will get uh, the, will lead that lap at the stripe. Now looking to clear into turn one, which he will do. And Morrison going for his second win uh, in a row is certainly on his way to doing so. 
London going after Prudy here down into turn number four. Gets into the back of her and she cannot save it. She goes up into the wall. Luke Walker collected. Spencer Fullerton gets a piece as well as perhaps a few more. Richard Trelinski chooses his lane wrong. Ilya Bondarenko squeezes through, but that will end Richard Trelinski's day. He's got Terminal 7 uh, engine cancer in, in that number 71 car, as does the 73 of Spencer Fullerton, apparently, who is limping around here despite having not a ton of cosmetic damage, but apparently something is very wrong on that number 73 car. He will bring it in this lap. Everyone tries to sort themselves out under caution. Duncan goes around the outside to get around. Sean Morrison and Nicholas Samadillo forgot how to even for a second. And he's got some significant damage on the front end of his car. And he's also just damaged the leader, Sean Morrison. He, Sean Morrison is going to stay out, we're hearing. But uh, that car could uh, be hampered for the rest of the race. Unfortunate for him. Uh, we'll have to see what his performance is like. Uh, once we go back to green flag racing. A great restart for the 06, but it'll, it will be the following few laps that determines whether or not he's going to have a chance at, uh, at, at winning this race. It appears so far that that car uh, is running just as well as it was before the caution, more or less. Uh, Sam Morrow has not been able to close in too, too much on his back bumper. Alex Tanker gets around London for third. Sam Curtis taking a peek on the 15, perhaps down into turn number one. Will not be able to uh, get alongside for now. Shrimp Engritz having a, a pretty solid day here. He started pre he started in the, uh, in the 20s um, and has now worked his way up into the top 10, looking perhaps on Petru London as Andy Thomas um, runs for that position currently. Alex Tanker has a history of doing very well on the short tracks of the Hark Pro Series. He won the season finale last year at Flamborough Speedway, and he won at St. Croix earlier this year. Uh, and he continues his drive to the front by overtaking Samuro in the 38. He's up to second, and he might be closing in on the, on the 06 as we speak here. Shrimp Engritz by Annie Thomas in the number 93, now going after the 19. He is on a mission to the front today in that 102 car. After a hard fought battle, Sam Morrow will get back around Alex Tanker for second. In the meanwhile, they've both caught Sean Morrison. Perhaps that damage has affected him more than I originally thought, but Shrimp Engritz down to the bottom underneath the 38 and might get the pass done before we even hit turn three. What a car the 102 has today. As does the 19 of Sam Curtis, it does appear. Uh, Sam Curtis going after another win here after winning in Motegi a few rounds ago. Shrimp Engritz quickly closing in on the number 06. We could have a battle for the lead in just a couple of laps at this pace. Matthew Nicholson has cracked the top eight in that number four car. Uh, he's had a pretty solid day so far, it appears. Kerry Davis in the 101. Also up here is Zachary Fitzwater who has taken evasive action and successfully, for once, uh, gotten around both of today's accidents, has cracked the top 10 in that 44 car. Andreas Allen alongside him as we speak. Jeffrey Fingai has fallen about 10 positions here as Mike Doan and Terrence Day continue battling for around 15th position. The number 102 has closed in on Sean Morris in the last few laps and will go to the inside here in turn number one. The 06 seems to have lost just a little bit of performance uh, as a result of Nicholas Samadio getting into the back of him. He's got that mangled rear end. It doesn't, it doesn't appear to have affected him too much since he's still in the top two and pulled away just a little bit from Alex Tanker, but it might have affected him just enough that he might not be the dominant car of the day anymore. That might have to go with to Shrimp Engritz if he continues at this pace. Annie Thomas, Sam Curtis, Andreas Allen, Kerry Davis, Matthew Nicholson, Jeffrey Fingai, and Mike Doan all appear in one giant group here behind the top five. Uh, Fingai and Nicholson slide it out just a little bit. Mike Doan, a solid run through the center of the corner, but Fingai with the best run out. Actually, Nicholson might have a better run out, but it might be Fingai who uh, ends up best off out of that Fitzwater going for a pass on the outside does not stick, uh, unfortunately, for him. 
Uh, although not particularly surprising considering uh, the passes we've seen so far today. Coming to 16 to go for Shrimp Engrits. The caution is out. I believe Sam Morrow just crashed while battling for that fourth position. Uh, but Sean Morrison had lost a few car lengths and he will gain that all right back. All Alex Tanker was also closing in on the 102. It'll be really interesting to see who has the, the car to beat on this restart. Sam Morrow just got dumped by Pichu London off of the corner. Goes for a quick spin. Uh, will avoid the wall. Uh, good for his sake, but he will lose a ton of positions here as he struggles to get that thing back into gear and around through the final couple of corners. Shrimp Engrits returns the field to the green flag. Just 11 laps to go for the 102 to hold off uh, Sean Morrison here as Pichu London gets underneath the 15. The 15 really Jeff Gordon did on that restart and he will fall to fourth right away here. We haven't seen too much of Pichu London in the 007 car uh, other than his wall hit early on under caution but uh, late in the race he makes his way in into a podium spot. Hard to say whether he'll have anything for Morrison uh, or Angritz up at the front but uh, it'll, it'll be interesting to see whether he can close in on them as the laps wind down here. Ophelia Dumian was running fifth when suddenly coming down the front straightaway, she blew a motor. Mike Doan got into the back of her, sending her up the track, luckily well out of harm's way of the rest of the drivers entering turn one. That's really unfortunate for her though, she was having a great run and she will have nothing to show for it here at race end. John Morrison had some time to repair his rear end under the brake before this green light checkered. Green flag back out. Two to go for these drivers. The 102 trying to hold off Sean Morrison for just two more laps. Morrison with a with a solid restart. In the 06 though, he will get a big run coming down the back straightaway with, with a little bit of help from Alex Tanker. As the 102 and the 06 continue side by side through turn three and four. Uh, the 06 might actually be able to lead this lap. Yes, he does actually. I'm not sure. Engritz might have led that. But going into turn number one, just two corners to go. Morrison runs out very wide. And Shrimp Engritz may be able to clear out of the corner. Yes, he does. The 102 just needs to hold off the 06 through this, uh, through this corner. He holds the inside the best he can. The 06 takes a peek, but it's not going to be enough. And down to the checkered flag, it will be Shrimp Engritz taking his first career victory. He ran 2013. The 2013 season was not able to win the race despite nearly winning Indianapolis. And now he will claim his first victory finally here in at Richmond International Raceway. Sean Morrison, a very close second. Uh, without the damage from Nicholas Amadio, could have been a completely different race and he, we could have seen him in victory lane for the second time in two rounds. Pichu London in, in the 007 car will finish third. Andreas Allen picked his way up to fourth. We didn't, we weren't really focusing on that, but uh, that must have been a pretty intense battle since I believe he was not in the top five at the start of that green-white checkered. Uh, Alex Tanker, fifth place for him. Solid effort. Daniel Voiles made it up to sixth. Terrence Day, seventh. Sam Curtis, eighth. Jeffrey Fingai and Mike, Mike Doan managed to crack, uh, finish out the top ten. Kim Markell and TJ Dent bring the field down to the green here, but that's not the real focus. Is that for some reason they started three wide, uh, just a few positions back as Alex Wheeler nearly loses in a tur into turn number one, and he he will nearly come to a stop on the apron. Tyler Faber needs to go to the outside so that the inside line can even get going here. Some big problems for the 69 car on the start. I think he was trying to get down pit, uh, pit road, but wasn't able to do so since uh, the, the other drivers weren't really aware of what exactly he was doing on that opening pace lap. And Wheeler would go s several laps down, very similar to, uh, to, um, to Duncan in race number one. Meanwhile, Kim Markell has cleared TJ Dent onto the back straight away for the first time. Bill Littlejohn wasting no time getting to the front out. An aggressive dive for the short track veteran, the number 30. And, and Bill Littlejohn might actually lead the first lap here. Yes, he does. Quite fitting for Littlejohn to make his way to the front early. 
He's had a, a really rough time on the short tracks actually so far this season. He qualified well though in that number 30 car and he might be a force to be reckoned with in race number two. Kim Markell surprisingly holding on very well in that number 02 car as Ali Nelson in the number nine currently holds on, holds on to the final podium spot. Very, very close race here at the start of this one. DJ Harris drops underneath the 9-4 second position in the 36 car, the 85, trying to follow him through as they go down the back straightaway and into turn 3-4. I believe this is the third time. Um, now at the very tail end of the field, uh, we have a couple of drivers kind of separated from everyone else. James Silverfox and Alex Allen, I'm sure, will be coming in under the first caution to make adjustments to their cars, but things are really spread out back here, and that's because of Alex Wheeler's first lap incident. As you get closer to the front, things are things be, uh, begin to get very packed here. As Ali Nelson losing a ton of spots in real hurry, that car apparently does not work on the top of the racetrack. Something for her and her team to note for uh, the rest of this race. The British Archer, Mark Nutt in the zero car, going after the number 36 into turn number one. Bill Littlejohn initially put quite a gap on these two as Mark Nutt slides way up the track. Luckily the 36 was up uh, was way up there as well, so no contact between the two of them. But as, I, as I was saying, Bill Littlejohn had put a bit of a gap on DJ Harris and the rest of the field, but now it is starting to be closed in by the likes of Mark Nutt and perhaps TJ Dent, who is looking for third position right now. Very close racing around 20th place. Maxwell Chan, Carlin Dumian, and Tyler Faber racing three wide. Chan going back uh, in a hurry. Chris Washer trying to squeeze his way between Chan and Don Thompson Jr. as Bejianoff and Washer go all the way down to the bottom of the track. Managed to save their cars. Impressive job by them to get to get them uh, to get their cars turned into turn number one. Oh, Chan nearly gets turned around by. Uh, Amin Al Ghul just getting bullied in that 07 car today. I know that the 07 is slow, but man, it's early on. You gotta be, you gotta be a little bit more patient than that. I wonder if the 07 has dropped a cylinder because that car is significantly off the pace. But it doesn't matter because the caution is out for the first time today. Going for the all-important position of 29th. James Silverfox gets into the back end of Marcus Stroman, who saves it, but then does it. He, but then Silverfox does it again, and Marcus Stroman and John, uh, Johnny Appleseed end up the worst out of that, and they hit the wall again after Stroman goes down into Louvier and back up into the wall. 18 laps in for Bill Little John as he gets the restart. Mark Nutt immediately dives to the inside and might get the job done here. It's uh, the inside line does seem to be the way to pass around this racetrack. J.R. Fitzpatrick also helping the double, uh, sorry, the zero car uh, get by, looking for second himself. And Lil John will fall to the tail end of the podium in just one lap. Uh, he's got to make sure that he gets down to the inside to protect against the 36, but will not do so. And Harris might be able to get third here. J.R. Fitzpatrick taking a peek on the zero off of the corner, unsuccessful. Now he gets a, he gets another move going on down the back straightaway and into turn number three, the 85 car looking to overtake the zero. Uh, zero the, uh, Mark Nutt will lead his second lap of the race, but that might be his only two laps led of this race if it's up to Fitzpatrick who gets by the zero off of turn number two, looking to come up in front of the zero, but goes defensive and will uh, hold along the inside line, just making sure that, that Mark can't uh, can't perform the crossover move. I imagine that's something that Fitzwater learned in the Canadian Tire Series. Oh wait, the Pinty Series. But the caution is out once again. Amin Al Ghul has been notably aggressive today, nearly turning around Chan earlier and now dumping the one car off of turn number two. A, a terrible spot to be stopped on the racetrack as a huge stack, uh, stack up occurs off of turn number two. Uh, Michael Kane gets a big piece of that, James Silverfox as well, Marcus Stroman, Alex Allen, Maxwell Chan, and Chris Louvier, uh, the worst off from that collision. Fitzpatrick with the restart and almost immediately the zero of Mark Nutt drops to the inside going for the lead in that zero car. Once again trying to get by the 85, these two appear to be the 
some of the best cars on the racetrack. The 36 hanging in there uh, in third as we speak as Ali Nelson has re-cracked the top five, though that's not going to last for long as Dent and Markel once again swing it along the low side and overtake the nine. Uh, Bill Littlejohn trying to make his way forward in sixth places. Zeus Morrow and James O'Shea have cracked the top ten, along with Tristan Wilhoyd. Both, both of the Discover Alaska cars having fairly good days so far. But we'll have to see whether or not they can um, progress their way forward a little bit further. Thompson Jr. not doing as well as his teammate back here in the rat's nest. Bejanov slides up into Markel. Sawyer Girl going for a pass on Bejanov as we speak. Ty Dent and Jeff Derry. Uh, going for a position perhaps in a minute here as Chris Washer and Gerald Reddington in the 112 nearly said Tyler Faber. It's been a while since the last round. Chris Washer um, going around uh, uh, Gerald Reddington as we speak. Uh, DJ Curtis in the 16 also overtaking the 112. A very bad day for the 112. Might uh, uh, leave Mike Doan with the lead in that 72. Uh, machine from race number one. Onboard Brandon Krasta here as uh, we're past the halfway the point of this race. Tyler Markell racing alongside, gets into the side of the 09 car. As Sawyer Girl goes by, Demir Bejinov also may be going by in that number 13 car. He had a, magnif a magnificent save from earlier on in this race and is making his way forward. Amin Al Ghul, who caused, uh, arguably, caused a caution earlier on uh, is also driving by in the 96. Mark Nutt and J.R. Fitzpatrick have pulled away sufficiently over the rest of the field that it's probably just going to be them battling it out for the uh, for the finish uh, if things stay green. About 20 laps to go at this point. These guys are slowly catching uh, a few damaged cars like Chris Louvier and Johnny Appleseed. Hard to say whether they will catch them in time at the moment. Just six laps to go for Mark Nutt to hold off Fitzpatrick. He's kept a consistent gap of a couple of car lengths, but Fitzpatrick closing in on her, in a hurry as Mark Nutt tries to decide how to best tackle the problem of passing Chris Louvier. Uh, they're closing on in on him in a hurry, but the 85 drops to the low side of the zero car. He kept uh, he caught the zero car sleeping, and Fitzpatrick. Trying to get by the number 98, Chris Louvier lets the 85 by, and now the zero will finally get by the number 98 car and will uh, go for another charge on that 85, trying to get that position back with just a few laps to go. Coming out of the corner, I believe this is four to go this time, and now the caution is out, so it's going to be a race back to the line, and then a green-white checkered. Mark Nutt would really like to get that position back. Uh, before we get back to the stripe to put himself in the best possible position for winning on this green-white checker. These two are clearly the dominant cars of the day, putting a few seconds gap between themselves and the rest of them, but J.R. Fitzpatrick will lead the field down to the caution flag. Bill Littlejohn has fallen outside of the top ten, really struggling in the center of the corner and on a bit on corner exit as far as speed goes, way too tight. And Tyler Markell just got into the back of the 30, sending him down and into the wall. He will get that car turned around, not too much damage. He's definitely going to be able to race in the green-white checkered, but he will do so from the very tail end of the field. Another short track uh, race gone wrong for that number 30 car. So, for the first time this year, I believe, both races will be determined by a green-white checker, J.R. Fitzpatrick in the 85 car with a good start over the zero of Mark Nutt down into turn one. Nutt with not, with not nearly as good of a start as Morrison got on the outside in race number one. He might be looking to slip down into the same lane as the 85 to have the best shot at challenging. No, he stays outside. Um, interesting decision by Mark Nutt and the 17 of Zeus Morrow manages to slip in front of TJ Dent and he will grab second here from Mark Nutt Phenomenal job by the 17 to get to, to get to second from fourth. Does he have anything for Fitzwater? Couple of car lengths back at the moment. Down the back straightaway for the final time into turn number three. The 17 closes in as best he can. Might we see a bump and run? Uh, as we saw so many times earlier today, no we will not. The 85 of J.R. Fitzpatrick 
will get his first career win here at Richmond. Zeus Morrow will come across the line second. Impressive job uh, once again for that number 17, uh, for the driver of that number 17 car in getting his way into that position from a very poor, what would normally be considered a very poor uh, restart position there. Uh, TJ Dent in the 18, uh, strong all day, will get third. Rusty Babinski fourth. Mark Nutt, not what he was looking for, but will still get a fifth place position. DJ Harris sixth in that number 36 car. Sawyer Girl seventh in the 01. Demir Bejianov cracked the top eight. Uh, Kim Markell in ninth, and Tyler Faber rounds out the top ten.